what is a word? Uh, one of the frustrating or exciting things about English grammar, uh, depending on whether you're a pessimist or an optimist, uh, is that a lot of seemingly complicated terms and complicated questions actually turn out to have rather easy definitions or easy answers uh, when you really sit down and understand what they're talking about. And on the other side, sometimes very simple words or simple questions turn out to have rather complicated answers. And that's going to be the case here. So what is a word? A word is the smallest unit of meaningful speech used in forming sentences in a language. Okay, and we could say in English uh, because that's the language, that's the grammar we're interested in and that's the language we're using, but in fact the, the definition holds true for all languages. So, uh, in grammar it's the smallest unit. Okay, so we're going to take words, so we're going to take a word or more and combine them to form a phrase, and we're going to take one or more phrases and combine them to form clauses, and one or more clauses and combine them to form sentences. But we're going to start with words, okay? And of meaningful speech, and I'm going to underline that because that is very important. You can't just take, we say, you know, a word is, is a bunch of letters with a space before them and a space after. And, but it can't be just any letters. The letters actually have to mean something to speakers and listeners of English in this case. Uh, and there's another subtlety here, and that's that if the meanings are different, then we're talking about different words. So we can have the same four letters, and I'll show you an example later. We can have the same four letters uh, in the same order, and they can actually be different words because they have different meanings, and because they have different meanings, some of those different meanings need to be handled uh, in specific ways in English grammar. So let's start off with some e easy ones. Now I'll say they're easy because these, you know, I looked in the dictionary and I found common words that only have one meaning. And that actually turned out to be harder than I thought. Because there's, there's a lot of scientific terms that, that only have one meaning. But when you start talking about common words, most of them have at least two and sometimes more. But I did find these. Okay, the noun photography, uh, the verb protect, oh, and the adjective touchy. And these only have we've all gotten together in English and we've said okay that means one thing and only one thing and that means one thing and only one thing and that means one thing and only one thing. Far more common is the situation where we have one word that means three different things and one of those is a noun 
So run is an event uh, where a bunch of people get together and run. Run is a verb meaning to move your legs very fast. It's also a verb that means to operate, so to run a lathe. Okay, so we would handle we would handle this run according to the rules for nouns. Okay, and we would handle these according to the rules for verbs. Um, a lot of words are a lot of words can be both uh, adjectives and adverbs. A lot of words can be both nouns and verbs. Uh, a lot of words can be both nouns and adjectives or verbs and adjectives. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of that that there's a lot of that that goes on. And there's one word they're going to put up here that really seems to have run amok in the language. That. that that and I'm going to put it down twice and you'll you'll see why and that and that okay and so the first one here is a noun, and uh, not too common, but you'll see uh, it was a lot of this and that. Okay, that's the phrase you'll normally see it in this and that. So, um, in in that in that usage, you treat it as a noun. Okay. This one is what we call a demonstrative adjective. Okay, and we'll, you know, uh, it's it's a, of a group called the terminers, and it, it answers the question which. Okay, which dog? That dog. Okay, so it, in in that definition, it follows the rules for demonstrative adjectives. Uh, that demonstrative. pronoun that is no good that would be its use as a demonstrative pronoun relative pronoun o u n the person that came to dinner would be its use as a relative pronoun. Okay, adverb. Again, not too common, but he was that drunk, or he was that crazy. Okay, that's modifying the adjectives drunk or crazy, uh, and so that is a adverb, and follows the rules for adverbs. And then finally, the conjunction It's called a subordinating conjunction, uh, but that that is used to combine um, clauses, okay, primarily. Other things as well, but primarily it's used to combine clauses. Okay, so each of these is has a different meanings, and each of those, some of them are somewhat related, uh, but each of these has a different meaning, and in this case, because they're all these different parts or subparts of speech, uh, they are handled in different way. And you can even see um, I can't believe I let me see, I can't believe let me do this that 
that and we'll say man I can't believe that that man is here and so we've got two we've we've repeated it but in fact what we've had is this one go back to white this one is a conjunction and this one is an adjective okay so they're in fact two different words they just happen to be spelled exactly alike so uh, I'm uh, slightly over my self-imposed 10 minute time limit but I think this was important and I will talk to you later